Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is me, Yashasvi Singh, an SD at Boss Coder Academy. Today we will be discussing about backend roadmap. So without wasting much time, let's dive into it. So before starting on with the main topics, let's take up a few things. Let's understand a few things about how backend works. Why do we need backend first, right? Then we'll move forward talking about what all things are required, what should we do, all of those things. So if I'll talk about very basics first, right? So why do we need backend? Right? What is the use of backend? So all of you guys would have used apps like uh, Google Maps, Zomato, Uber, right, Swiggy, for ordering food, booking a cab, watching movies, or watching series, all of these stuff. Right? So how all of these things works? Right? How do we just on a click of a button book, book a cab, right? Yeah, hum order, khana order karte hai, Zomato pe, Swiggy pe. So how do we request a restaurant? How do we order a restaurant? How do we How that food is delivered to us? All of it. So, Let's understand how all of this works, right? What are the technologies which are used to, you know, create such things which are called backends. So let's talk about all of this in this road. So starting on with the very first and the very basic thing that is programming language. So sometimes it becomes very difficult to understand which programming language to start. Whether we should take Python, whether we should take JavaScript or whether it should be Java. I've seen many people use different languages such as JavaScript, Python, Java, .NET, uh, Go. Many languages, there are many languages out there, right? But if you are a beginner, if you are just starting with backend development, right? so I would suggest you guys to start with Python. Why Python? It is very easy to understand. It is, it helps us with rapid development and it gives us uh, a good amount of functionalities to work with, right? That's why let's start with Python, right? Now, after, you know, selection of this language, although there are many languages which are used for different things, you know, we could talk about JavaScript for building, uh, let's say web application, web frameworks, could talk about Java, which would help you bring enterprise level applications, government applications, all of that, right? But you know, the very basic to begin with, right? The very uh, easy to begin with would be Python, right? So Python would be the language which I'll be explaining you with the rest of the things, right? So let's move forward with it. So this was the step one which you would require to, you know, just start on with the backend development path. That was selection of language. Moving to the second step, which is frameworks. So after selection of language, this framework is a very important part. Because you would have the tools, you would have the knowledge to build something, but you would require a tool to build it. Like you would have the knowledge of language, how that language works, what it does. But you, if you don't have the knowledge of framework, how things are built, how things are you know, integrated, then it would be of no use. So a framework helps us to do that. It helps us to build something out of a particular language. Right? So if I talk about specifically Python, so it has frameworks such as uh, Django, Flask, all of those. And if I talk about, let's say, some other languages, right? So in Java, we have Spring, Spring Boot. Right? In uh, JavaScript, we have Node.js. So there are n number of frameworks, right? It depends on you which language you're most comfortable with or which language you are starting with and what is your use case for backend development. So this was the second step, which was frameworks. Moving on to the next step. So next step or the third step, you could say, is about database development. So database development is the most important part of the backend development. Okay, because each and everything in each and every website, okay, I just gave you an example of Swiggy or Netflix or any other app, consider any app, right? So it works on only and only on data, right? Everything depends on data. Okay. Even if you're doing some, let's say, uh, real-time tracking, right? If you are, let's say, using Google Maps, so it does real-time tracking, right? So all of that tracking, right, depends on some other people's data, right? So data is an important part of any application or any software, right? So working with data, you know, understanding how to work with data, what are operations you could do on data, right? How could you fetch data? How could you remove data? There are n number of things again, right? So to understand how this data works, we use something called databases, right? Or for the management of this data, we use something called databases, right? And now in databases, there are many things, right? It is solely divided or it is, you could say, majorly divided into two parts. One is relational database, another one is non-relational database. Okay. So relational database helps us to arrange data in form of tables. Right? That means in rows and columns. And non-relational is a flexible kind of database which helps us to arrange our data in JSON format, right? We call that document. So all of this, now some people would ask what is the difference between them? Why do we use relational or non-relational? Right? So I'll give you a very small example. Uh, let's talk about, let's say, banking sector. Right? Let's say I'll take an example of any bank, right? Let's say uh, State Bank of India. Right. 
So in State Bank of India, you would need data very rapidly, right? When you make a transaction, you would need data very rapidly onto your message, right? You, you get a message that this, this, this amount is credited from your account or debited to your account, many things, right? So all of this, right? All of this requires very fast data manipulation, right? Or very fast data display. So in such case, you would require a structured form data, right? So in that case, you would do, you would need relational database as it is as it is stored in rows and columns. So it is very easy to get that data or fetch that data. Whereas, uh, whereas in other case, right, if I talk about uh, non-relational databases, so in non-relational databases, you have data which is stored in form of JSON format. Right? So sometimes what happens is when you are, let's say, sharing a form or uh, waiting for some responses, you get different types of data. Right? So in tables, right, in relational database, you cannot deal with different types of data. You already predefined that, okay, this is going to be this, the data type of this is going to be this. Let's say if I talk about name, right? So name would always be a string, right? But that's not the case in non-relational databases, right? So non-relational database helps us to work with different kinds of data, different data types, right? So that's why we use non-relational database, right? So yeah, you could say Google Drive is an example of it. There you could store any kind of data, right? Any kind of data. It may be an image, it may be a video, it may be text files, documents, anything, right? So that are what non-relational databases. Right? And I just, just gave you gist of what databases are. Again, databases is a very big thing, right? It is huge, right? It is technically huge. If I to explain it so I'll have to create a totally new video out of it, right? So we'll talk about it. A core video will come, we'll talk about how databases work. Okay, what is the fundas behind all of these things? How we play with data? How we send data? How we send data? How we manage data? Manage data. We'll talk about all of it in a new video. So this was the third step that was databases. So moving on to the next step that is the fourth one is called APIs. So API stands for application programming interface. Right? Of course, this is a very classy definition. I mean, like the application programming interface, as a kya ho guys may there would be so many things to understand, kita complex ho gaya, what do not. But it is a super simple thing, right? Super simple thing. So let's understand API with a very easy example. So let's take an example of let's say a postman. So a postman kya karta hai? Ek ghar se chitthi leta hai, usse uthata hai and dousre ghar pe deliver karta hai. Right? So ek message wo ek jaga se dousri jaga deliver karta hai. Same is the case with API. So API ko aap ek postman ki tarah relate kar sakte ho. Wo ek jaga se data uthata hai and us data ko dousri jaga transfer kar deta hai. Right? That is what an API is. As simple as that. Right? So API helps us to fetch some data from the back end part. Right? and deliver it to the front end part, right? Vice versa as well, right? You could take some data from front end, right? Maybe let's say if I'll give an example, so um, forms were there, right? Feedback forms. So feedback form ka data, you could take it from front end and move it to back end, right? So vice versa is also possible. So as simple as that, right? Ki ek jaga se data uthaya and dousri jaga deliver kar diya. That is what an API does, right? Now there are many technical things involved in it as well, such as Pelic request jati hai, fir uska ek response aata hai. That, these are just technical terms to you know tell you the same thing. Right? So that are what APIs are, and that is how it works. This was the fourth step that was API. So before moving on to the next step, that is the fifth step about data security. Let's you know just recap about what all things we have learned till now or kis kis keys ki zurat hai to follow this backend roadmap. So the very first thing was programming language. You should just clear on that you should start programming language. Ke start karna hai. Moving on, as you select this programming language, there would be a framework based on this programming language that you should learn. The next step after the framework would be databases. You have to look into databases, how databases work, all of these things related to databases. And finally, the last step, which we just discussed, was APIs. Now, after APIs, you need to talk about something called data security. So data security is super, super important. Like, we all know that nowadays many cyber attacks are taking place. Even the Uber database was affected a few months back, right? Many their most essential parts of data was lost or with were was with hackers, right? So it is very important to just make your data secure, right? So that is also a part of backend. Now you could use different frameworks to do that. You could use different tools to do that. You could take up some programming approaches as well, right? To do that, you guys would have heard of something called two-factor authentication. Right, by using Google or anything like that. So you, you would have heard of something called two-factor authentication. That is a part of data security. Right? So that means once your request is approved, only and only then you'll be able to access some resources. Right? So that is what data security is. Just to make your data secure and 
you know able to access it easily so that was all about data security so this was the fifth step of data security the next step which we are going to talk about is server management so server management that is the step six is super super important if i'll talk about working with backends right or creating backends right so whenever you make a request we talk we just talked about apis right so i just told you that in apis we get we deliver some data from one place to another right so to do this i just told you we make a request and we get a response so to work with this whole cycle of request and response we use something called a server right you you guys would have heard people talking about ki server down ho gaya tha instagram ka server down tha uh, whatsapp ka server down tha ya kisi site ka server down tha so what is this server thing right so this server helps me to make a request and get a response right whenever even you search something aap google pe jaate ho kuch search karte ho right let's say www.youtube.com so ek request jaati hai google ke server pe right aur wahan se wo aapko ek response deti hai jiski wajah se aapko youtube.com view hoti hai jisse aap youtube.com dekh pate ho ki ha aise hai youtube.com right wo display hoti hai web page pe so that is how important a server is for any website for any web application or let's say for any software right because आपकी सारी रिक्वेस्ट एंड रिस्पॉन्सेस आर गोना पास थ्रू दैट सर्वर राइट सो इट इज सुपर इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ दिस सर्वर वर्क्स व्हाट ऑल थिंग्स यू डू विद दिस सर्वर एंड हाउ इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अस इन बैक एंड डेवलपमेंट सो दिस वाज ऑल अबाउट सर्वर मैनेजमेंट दिस वाज द सिक्स स्टेप दैट वाज सर्वर मैनेजमेंट मूविंग टू द लास्ट स्टेप दैट वाज दैट इज कंटेनराइजेशन दैट इज द सेवंथ एंड द लास्ट स्टेप दैट यू शुड लर्न ओके सो सम पीपल टेक इट एज अ पार्ट ऑफ डेवोप्स एज़ वेल राइट बट आई बिलीव दैट Uh, when you are learning backend right you should have some knowledge about containerization as well how what is containerization how it works so you guys would have heard of something called docker right or something called kubernetes or all of these things right jenkins right so all although all of these are parts of uh, devops right but even when you are learning backend you should have some knowledge about them right so if i'll specifically talk about containerization right so containerization means creating an image right or you could say replicating an environment which would help you to test your software right so what we do in this docker thing that we create an image right let's say of a server or of a, a operating system and we test our software in that environment right so it is very important in terms of uh, testing perspective right or understand the working of a particular software or how would it behave let's say in a situation where 100 requests are being made in a single minute so all of that you know to analyze all of that to work with all of that testing analyzing and all of these stuff we use the, this containerization right so this containerization is super super important in that aspect right so according to me if you are you know going to be a good back end developer so you should also know about some of these things as well you know which some people consider miscellaneous right so this was it about the last step that was containerization so this was it for the back end roadmap right so there is the list again of all the technologies which is the, which we just discussed right if you find the video helpful please like the video and subscribe to the channel thank you